So I assume most of you will recognize this cheap crappy power bank kit that I got out of my last mailbag. And the reason I'm making that assumption is because this is the thing in that mailbag that got more comments than everything else put together. So I guess that means I probably should build it and see just how craptacular it really is. Um, based on you guys' comments, I'm not holding up much hope, but then again, I never did. I always knew this was going to be a cheap, crappy thing. So first of all, let's take a little bit closer look at this board. Um, there's not too much going on. Most of what's happening is this chip here. Got an inductor for the, uh, for the boost and or buck converter. I'm assuming it's for the boost, which is going out to here. There's a couple of resistors over there. Um, got a little diode. What is that guy? Diode there. Some sort of a transistor in there. No, I can't pick up a number off that one. What's this one say? Yeah, that one is an E2SH6, which probably is just a switching transistor, I'm guessing. But the interesting thing, or the thing that's doing the most work in here, is this hot chip HT4936S. So I'm going to assume that it's a dedicated power bank chip that just handles all the stuff in there. Why wouldn't it be, right? This is a common enough application. Let's go see if we can find a data sheet for that guy. The HT4936 is a monolithic mobile power management chip. Blah, 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 blah. Um, one amp in, one amp out, and four LEDs. Anyway, um, so here we've got uh, pretty much what we expected. Um, battery plus and minus. Uh, battery plus goes to BTP and also feeds through the inductor to LX. L being a common inductor, sort of a name. Uh, and then the five volts for the input and the output common together go to voltage common and voltage output and capacitor to ground. That's nice. Also, those go over here through a little NTC thermistor, um, temperature sensing component, into the NTC input. And, hmm, wonder what that is. DPDN, something power down, detect power down, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got a little switch here, which we have on ours. And there's four LEDs here for um, just indicating charge state. And then there's this LED, which I assume is the flashlight style LED. Built-in maximum one amp linear charging mode. Uh, trickle, constant current, constant voltage, three-stage charging. Oh, that's very nice. That's what we want for lithium-ion batteries. Um, boost output current. There we go. With battery at 3.6, it can sustain one amp out. So yeah, that's something useful that we learned from the data sheet, that that is in fact a complete lie. There, that's that fixed. Okay, uh, let's get busy assembling this thing. Thinking first we'll get that installed because I can solder onto the solar panel and LED and battery while it's already installed. Well, that's interesting. The battery plus is just a flat pad. Everything else is a through hole. Hmm. So one of the comments on the mailbag video said that he had tried to assemble this kit. It's a bunch of little screws. Oh, that's how the lids secure themselves on. Nifty keen. Anyway, so one of the commenters mentioned that this button and this little LED dif diffractor, diffractor, diffuser, something, whatever it is, did not fit very well. So let's just give this a try. There's a couple of pins that that sits on. Ooh, fat fingers tonight. Okay, so that just kind of jams in there. And that button is kind of jams in there. And then I guess we'll just toss this guy in. So this guy fits in There's a couple little clips in there. That little one there. 
and the same thing on the other side. So it just kind of wedges in there, which when I was playing with this in the, in the mailbag video, it, uh, it went in reasonably well, but we'll see now that I'm actually trying to do this for real, if it goes in. So those connectors aren't really fitting through the holes. I'm kind of jammed up here. Why is that? Well, that's better. Spread the wings a little bit. Okay. Well, this one works pretty. That clicks pretty well. Turn it the right way up. Seems to fit in there. Yeah, that'll work. We'll put on the solar panel. Which side should the solar panel go on? This doesn't really matter that much, does it? I think I'll put it on from this side. So no need to make these wires any longer than necessary. Because I think I'm going to be tight for space in here. I noticed a bunch of people earlier this week giving Dave Jones a hard time about using a, a sponge and yeah it cools your iron tip off but realistically I've been using a sponge for over 30 years and I have never had a soldering iron tip shatter or crack it's it may theoretically be an issue I don't care I'm used to using it I've been using it forever I'm going to keep using it I do have one of these and I use it occasionally but I'm just so comfortable with the sponge, so I'm going to keep using the sponge. Okay, got the wires stuck through from the other side. I want the rough side of the wires on the side that's not going to poke into anything. I'm hoping that's this side. Because the other side's a lot closer to the back of the solar panel. A little bit of Kapton tape over these connections here, just, just in case. And I'm not expecting a lot of current to come out of this solar panel. I remember testing that solar panel in the uh, mailbag video, and I remember it was fairly low current. Making it, you know, almost useless at its intended purpose, but it's part of the kit, so I'm going to put it in. Now then, do you remember which side of this thing from that from that uh, other video? Do you remember which side of this thing was the one that uh, that was positive and which was negative? I don't. It's just an eighteen six fifty in a holder. There we go. So that is the positive one there. So the positive side of the LED is over there. And again, I want these to come through from the back. That's a pain in the ass. That was fairly straightforward. Trim those off a little bit. I, mean, I knew there wasn't going to be anything too difficult about most of the building this kit. It's mostly assembly. But the tricky part's coming up here. Because there's no freaking battery holders, right? So the solar panel, and let's take that protector off bravely right now. So that sits in there, and then that... clamps over there somehow somehow okay there we go and those itty bitty screws go in oh aha see the blue light there the solar panel is doing its thing
Okay, that worked pretty well. So how does this fit in there? Just like that. Flip him over. I wonder if I can just tape him down. That'd be a little cheesy, but maybe. Is that how they would have done it in your average Chinese factory? Just tape it in with some Kapton tape. So batteries. I am going to use these 18650s that I salvaged from a laptop pack some time ago. So what do we got here? 3.5. Yes, I'm on backwards. 3.44. I don't care about polarity. 3.48, not when I'm doing this anyway. 3.75, that's higher than the rest. And 3.79. Okay, so they're all mostly charged. But one of the things that you guys pointed out, I uh, can't remember who it was, I will no doubt edit it in somewhere on here, is that there is no protection on this board. And if you remember back to the data sheet, it didn't say anything about uh, overcharge or over discharge protection. So the standard way to do that would be to use a DW01 chip. And I've got a couple of them on little boards here. So this little board has a DW01 and an 8205 on it. And it is in a form factor where it's the same size as that. The positive battery terminal is on the back side here. And the negative battery terminal and the two terminals going to the circuit are on the front here. So that's a slick little form factor. But two things. One, I don't have an easy way of attaching that. And two... It just barely fits inside here. So I'm not going to use those ones. I'm going to use these ones instead, which let me break. Again, break that board off, that V groove piece off. So these little guys are exactly the same circuit, same MOSFET, same, same DW01. And they are designed to sit right here. And there's the B minus side. There's the B plus side. There's the V plus and the V minus going out to the circuit. Hopefully they all fit like that. I'll burn that bridge when we get to it. After talking about that circuit, let's actually take a look at it. Hang on. So here is the DW01. This is a, just a ubiquitous little chip, and it's it's a one-trick pony. It is a one-cell lithium-ion polymer battery protection IC. So here is the standard circuit for it. VCC and ground across the, the battery with a 100-ohm resistor in series and a 1 microfarad or 0.1 microfarad capacitor just for smoothing and whatnot. Uh, current sense off this 1K ohm resistor. And then two MOSFETs, one connected to the overcurrent, the overcharge, and one connected to the over dis yeah, to the over discharge. That's what that one is. In the circuit that we've got, these two uh, MOSFETs are just uh, in a single dual MOSFET package. Yeah, they're together in one dual MOSFET package. So in order to make these a little bit easier to deal with. I'm just going to use some Kapton tape and tape those onto all the batteries. And hopefully that will make the next stage a little bit easier. So I got those guys all taped on. And I just want to set these in place. I'm still not going to solder the power onto them yet. Just want to set these in place. Positive, yeah, positive is this way. And try and get them sort of lined up a little bit. I've got a piece of tape upside down at the bottom there. So that hopefully it'll kind of hold them all in position. 
and I can sort of solder them together in situ. That's the plan, anyway. Notice I'm leaving the most risky part till the very last. That being the part where uh, where I solder onto the batteries. And I know it's risky to solder directly onto lithium ion cells. I've done it before. If you if you go in carefully and quickly enough, you'll be fine. But as always, if you're scared of it, don't try this at home. If you're overconfident, don't try this at home. You need to be just sort of a healthy respect. And of course, me and my lawyer aren't going to tell you to do this. So there, I've just got that tinned, just to make it a little bit easier, hopefully. And those pads in there are already pre-tinned. So I should be able to just go onto each of those pads. Okay, one. How am I going to hold that without burning my hands? I'll use the cheap tweezers that claim to be non-conductive. Well, they are non-conductive because they're made of plastic. They claim to be heat resistant, but they have proven not to be. But they're not going to conduct heat away from my solder join, which is what I want. My alignment's not ideal, but it's working. There's a whole lot that's not ideal about this project. Do I look like I care? Ow, 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 ow. There, positive side on. Repeat for the negative side. So I decided to back off a tad on the being Cavalier and throw a little bit of heat shrink on one of these conductors so that they don't short together somehow. I'm not sure how that would happen, but it's cheap insurance and it's easy to do. And Long-time viewers may recall that I bought a ridiculous length of uh, super tiny heat shrink. So I might as well use it for something. Okay, now the scary part, soldering those guys down. I think I think I'm going to pre-tin both the strip and the cell. And then I'll just smash them together with, with quick heat. I mean, I'm a little bit cavalier, but I'm not stupid. Okay, that's those all tinned. Now then. Okay, so that wasn't working. So I've swapped, swapped out to a larger tip with more thermal mass. So it's going to carry more heat and not cool down as quickly. I've turned up the iron just a little bit, and I've switched to a little bit thicker solder, which carries more flux in its core. So, all those things combined, I'm actually able to get some solder wetting onto the end of those cells quickly, which is the important part. Quick, quick, quick. Quick in, quick out. Nobody gets hurt. Now, to actually put that on that should have melt welded on yes it did soldered on just like that so those are still cool to the touch and that's cooled right off again quickly so that's good
Okay. Well, that's odd. I can't find the other voltmeter. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. This will do. So I should have 3.7. So that's going to be... You know, the batteries are going to be charging and discharging each other a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's not ideal, but we'll go with it. 3.7... Three point seven and three point seven. So that's going to be the pack. Now I've just got to solder those two wires on there. And we're done. Okay, I've switched tips again back to the smaller one, just because that big one would be really stupid down in here. Okay, so that's B minus. B plus goes over there onto that, onto that pad right there. The one that doesn't have a through hole for whatever reason that I don't understand. So we'll do that just so we can get onto the pad. And as soon as I touch that, it's going to make the circuit fully live. So I'm going to pre-tin that pad down there. I try to anyway. This is hard working deep in there. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but when I'm soldering with the camera zoomed in like this, I'm actually working in about the middle of my workbench, which is a considerable distance from my face. Ooh. Okay, that's on there solidly. Yes, it is. Okay. We now have a live circuit. Now we just got to finish the rest of the mechanical bits and pieces. Right, it's together. Hey, look at that. When there's light facing the solar panel, it's actually charging and it shows an LED. That's cool. Okay, um, now let's just try the LED. Oh, wow, there we go. So double tap gives you that little light, double tap turns it off again, push and hold gives you that bright panel, push and hold again, off, looks like we've got two LEDs worth of charge in it right now, cool, time to play I think, so I think the first thing I'm going to do since it says that it's only got two LEDs worth of charge, which makes sense because it's got about three point seven volts on the batteries is we will try and charge it so that charging chip claims to charge at one amp i have my power supply over here set for five volts and two amp current limit so we shouldn't hit it turn him on and there that says it's charging and it's drawing nine million nine hundred milliamps so that's just shy of an amp. That's not bad. That's pretty close. Now, since we know that these are both going to be one amp, this one might try and trick something, but, um, so we've got 5.2 volts out, put a bit of a load on it, put my little disco light on it. There we go. 
that's more like it. So that is drawing 90, 100 milliamps, 180 milliamps when it's all lit. And that's working just fine. Oh, up to, up to 200 milliamps in a couple of uh, modes when everything's lit up. That's good. Oh, yeah, right. I have to keep talking because this thing sound effect, the sound reactive, right? Let's try something a little bit more challenging, shall we? The resistor thing, which is one amp or two amps. It's in one amp mode right now, and it's showing 0.89 and 0.89 uh, amps, 890 milliamps, 900, and 4.9, just right at, still at five volts. So what happens if we try and draw two amps out of it? My guess is it's going to shut down on overcurrent. Yep. That's not a surprise. Okay, so I'm back in one amp mode. Oops. That thing's angry that it's been overloaded. So there we go. Reset him. Okay, so again, 900 milliamps. And this is the one that claimed to be two amps, but it isn't. This is the electronic load. So right now, uh, you can't really see that very well because it's so flickery. It says uh, 0.47 amps. So I'll turn it on. Oops, turn it on there. Still not use this thing. Uh, 2.3 watts, 5.1 volts. So let's crank him up and see where it fails. So there's a little over 1 amp. 5.1 watts, 5.0 volts still. 1.2 was a boat where it crapped out. I'm going to turn it back a little bit. Let's reset it here. Okay, so that's 1.06 amps. And it's happy. I should have been watching more carefully because I know it's going to drop out. 0.708, still at 5 volts. 1.1 amps. 1.12 amps is where it dropped out. That 2 amps was a lie. We knew that from looking at the chip. Um, there's the 1 amp output. Actually, they're, they're both in parallel. We measured that uh, during the mailbag, didn't we? Yeah. So it's it works as a power bank. It works as a light. The solar charging sort of works, but only just slightly. And it's, it's never going to charge the battery. It's only putting milliamps into the thing. So verdict, um, it's a power bank. If you ignore the solar, it's an adequate power bank for what it is. A cheap, crappy power bank that lies about its specifications. If you think about it like that, it's not bad. If you're expecting it to be some high quality thing that you'd pay hundreds of dollars for, no, it isn't that. Obviously it isn't. I paid less than 10 bucks for it, I think. Well, that's that. Um, it was kind of fun to put together, a little frustrating. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it as always. If you have any more comments about this, and I'm sure you do, uh, please throw them down in the comments below. We can talk about it. Um, if you, I'm sure you have safety concerns about some of the things I've done. Please feel free to berate me about that in the comments too. Questions, anything else? Love to hear about it. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you later.